my channel. So today's video, I am going to share with you guys the disadvantages of buying pre-sale properties. Disadvantages and the advantages. So to start, let me just talk about the advantages. But before that, one of the most attractive property offers are condo or housing units under free selling offer. Dahil yung feature nila is medyo minimal. Minimal lang katulad for example yung down payment. Tapos yung interest rate medyo mababa. Tapos yung location din attractive. Pagdating naman sa monthly amortization very low. Kaya lang ang catch dyan is that pag binisita mo na yung address, yung construction sometimes, kadalasan, um, malayo pa uh, pagdating sa completion stage. Kaya, ikaw as a buyer, you probably understand why the offers are irresistible. Sa real estate, yung pre-selling condo or subdivision housing units are residential properties sold before construction. So, while it's under construction and just right after the developer launched the groundbreaking ceremony or even during the planning stages when the area doesn't have any construction activity. So, depending on your research, a free seller offer can be a hugely advantageous route to snagging a great property acquisition or an offer you must avoid at all costs. As a cautious buyer, syempre ikaw yung buyer, uh, you don't want to take a high risk especially kapag yung investment mo na is nag involve ng millions. So, kailangan mo mag, mag uh, you need to make sure na you can make a judicious decision pa after mong ma-research ma yung binibili mong property. So, as a guide, here are the two advantages of pre-sale properties. A number one dyan is yung uh, promising investment with cheaper prices. Of course, di ba? Kung titignan mo yung advertisement of well-appointed residential units ready for occupancy, kadalasan yung prices nila ay out of reach para sa, para sa mga buyers. Kasi nga, that's why... Um, Kadalasan yung pre-selling unit is more attractive, uh, sometimes even seductive pa nga eh, kasi dahil nga sa low introductory price nila, which can be as much as 30% cheaper than a finished unit. Additional sweetener pa dyan, minsan nagdadagdag sila ng 15% discount depending yon sa mode of payment. Pagdating naman sa down payments, nagdadag, nagbibigay din sila ng extra 10% na pwede mong bayaran within 3 years or pwedeng yung iba, uh, payable siya through manageable terms under pag-ibig loans or bank financing. So, ikaw, if you are into your property investment, itong ganitong klaseng offer is quite tempting, di ba? Kasi, pag once yung property mo is ready for occupation na, favorable yung condition, pagdating sa mga infrastructure at accessibility development na nandun sa area, since finish na yung units mo, mas madali na siyang mag-appreciate. Uh, mas mabilis na mag-appreciate yung value kaysa dun sa dati mong ibinili, di ba? So, another advantage ng pre-sale properties is yung more options and flexibility. Since condo unit isn't completely finished yet, you as a buyer have more option as the construction stage. So, uh, pwede kang uh, mamili ng location, pwede kung anong floor ang gusto mo, tapos pwede ka na rin uh, mag design ng interior makagawa ng interior design mo so depende yan sa kontrata na sasainan mo to bargain with your agent is the ability to make such leverage so parang ibig ko sabihin dyan is that bago mo pa signan dun sa kontrata i-check mo na kung uh, pwede ka ba yung mga mag-pick ng specific floor which is kadalasan oo naman Tapos, another thing is that pwede mo ring uh, i-negotiate na during construction, kung po pwede, inspect mo yung project. Uh, madalas ito, pwede ito sa mga housing, yung talagang house and lot. Para kapag may nakita kang defects, pwede mong isabihin agad sa developer para 
may adjust nila. So, needless to say, it gives you plenty of freedom to design and customize your future home or investment. So, yan lang naman yung dalawang advantages of pre-sell properties. So, pag-usapan naman natin ngayon yung risk of pre-sell properties. So, ito naman yung disadvantages. So, ang number one dyan is yung delay in delivery. So, in addition to the two clauses that allow vague practices within pre-sale contracts, may mga clauses din na nag-aalaw ng developer na the, pwedeng madelay yung delivery ng property for up to one year or more. ba diba? So, kailangan i-mind mo yan. Ang tagal, ba diba? So, kung ina-expect mo 2021, pwede pa palang mag delay yan ng 2022. So, ikaw, Uh, flexibility options and revisions from original plan could alter timelines of delivery, leaving a buyer uncertain when, when, when he or she will get the keys. So, ibig sabihin, uh, katulad ng sinabi ko, pwede pala silang, mag uh, yung mga developer pala, pwede silang mag-delay ng one year or more. So, walang kasiguraduhan. So, ikaw na umaasa na matitake over mo na yung, ma-occupy mo na yung binili mong unit, uh, let's say, for example, sa so 2022, naku, hindi pa pala kasi nga na-delay. So, ikaw, uh, ikaw ang, ang kawawa, di ba? Kasi hindi mo alam kung kailan mo mahahawakan yung susi. So, number two is unexpected finished product. So, unlike sa ina-advertise na properties uh, that are more pricey yet ready for occupancy, um, those that are offered on pre-selling are a long way before the owner can take over and make use of them. So, yun yung sinasabi ko kanina. So, meron kadalasan yung ano nila, uh, five five years bago mo pa ma-occupy. So, having terms such as more or less and subject to and change without prior notice, siguro nakikita nyo na yan sa kontrata, pre-sale contracts can be reasonably make buyers feel jittery as the other side of flexibility sets in. So, di ba, parang uh, ikaw, wala kang kasirugor doon kasi sila nga yung, ano eh, sila yung, uh, pwede, anytime pwede nilang baguhin yung, ano nila, yung, yung, kontrata, uh, yeah, nandyan na yung ano, babaguhin nila yung unit sizes. Kasi nga, yun yung nakalagay eh, na prior to notice, mga ganun, hindi na sila magsasabi, features na, features and floor plans, pwedeng baguhin. Uh, outside, ito, pwede nilang baguhin na without your knowledge kasi nilagay na nila dun sa without prior notice. So, ikaw, as a buyer in the end, could end up paying for a property na whose characteristics will fall way below he below your expectation. So, parang, et, yung unang pinakita nila sa, sa inyo na in-advertise nila, uh, dati, kunyari, meron siyang uh, 50-60 square meter. Pero, nung ito turnover na sa'yo, binago na pala, naging ano na lang siya, 50 or 50, mga ganun. Tapos yung toilet, hindi na ganun yung kung ano yung pre-nescent nila. So, yun yung medyo uh, risk ng pre-sale. So, the third one is no refunds for failed projects. Oh, ayan na. Very dangerous kasi. No refunds for failed projects. Some pre-sale housing project went bust as a developer were unable to find additional finding to continue the project and went bankrupt. So, um, you have to do your due diligence before you even start putting down money. Just like what I told in the beginning, you have to make your due. Uh, especially kung nag involve na to ng millions. Di ba, kadalasan ngayon, yung mga kondo, wala nang murang kondo ngayon, millions na. So, ikaw, As a buyer who made earlier pay financial commitment were left to write off their investment as losses as they were unable to get refunds. So, ikaw, kawawa ka kasi sayang yung pera mo na na-invest mo na, di ba? Kasi wala kang magagawa dahil nga nag-bankrupt sila. So, yun yung number three. Yung number four, corrupt agents. Oh, para sa mga OFW, makinig. 
Some agents target vulnerable clients such as overseas Filipino workers who are unable to personally visit the location. O, di ba? Sabi ko nga sa inyo, madalas yan. Dahil ako, galing din ako sa abroad. Madami yan. I mean, hindi ko naman nilalahat ng mga agent. But you have to make sure you before you even put down the money. Uh, see if you can send someone to check the, the place, the property, and review their contracts. Kasi uh, kadalas may mga agents na nagdadagdag din ng mga layer of fees that normally are not included in list of things buyers needs to pay. Even though yung project is progressing well rug agents don't forward buyers money to developers. Ayan. So ikaw as a buyer you have to do your due diligence. Uh, make sure na Uh, clear yung kontrata na basa mo, hindi lang yung sign ka ng sign kasi sayang yung pera mo so yan yung disadvantage ng uh, pre-sale properties unexpected finished product delay in delivery no refunds for failed pro projects tapos corrupt agents so yan yung kailangan pagtuunan mo ng pansin bago ka bumili ng pre-sale. So, again guys, opinion ko lang po yan. Um, depende po yun sa inyo. You can still try to do your homework. Just like I always say, if you're really into uh, uh, real estate investing, try your best. Or if you're an OFW, especially I target OFW, kasi sila yung, yung katulad nga na-mention ko, sila yung mga nasa abroad, tas bumibili na lang sila based on the, um, could be good representation or misrepresentation, kung ano na lang yung nakita sa kanila. So, I mean, hopefully naman, sana yung mga agent uh, maging honest. Kasi, uh, kawawa naman yung mga OFW. But, I know there are so many agents going abroad and then promote their their ano their projects. So COFW katulad niya nang dami ko na receive na mga messages na yung gusto nang ipa-assume yung yung unit nila, uh, madalas condo tas maliliit pa. But uh, yeah, I'm still reviewing. Some of them are like really overpriced especially with the location. So I don't think this these um uh people really did their research before even buying that condo units but anyway guys thank you very much and i'll probably share a little bit more of um an another things that what the public needs to do when planning to buy pre-selling properties i'll see if i can record right after this video thank you very much please don't forget to like share and subscribe Bye for now.